How we doing today, YouTube? Uh, before we get into the video, I wanted to let you guys know uh, Katie Hill Farmer now has an Instagram, and Facebook, and a Twitter page. If you want to uh, look below in the description, we can go, uh, if you want to, go check it out. Give it a like or follow. I really appreciate it. But let's get into the video. Uh, tonight I'm up in the shop and I wanted to uh, the weather outside is kind of horrible, so I didn't uh, do any videos outside. But uh, I did want to go over some tools that you're going to need if you plan on doing a high tensile fence. Uh, as you can see, I got some laid out on the table here. And, uh, well, we don't need that, but it's up on here. But anyhow, uh, some of the tools that you're going to need just uh, to, you know, start doing your high tensile fence around your property. And one of the biggest reasons I like the high tensile fence is, especially around wooded areas, and uh, I, I don't know if I got any pictures of it. I'd have to look. But if I do, I'll in, uh, put them in the video. But as you can look back in some of my videos, we had a pretty bad windstorm come through and two trees uprooted and also... Uh, snapped halfway off and just pulled the fence straight in there and pretty much grabbed the 462 go up there and cut them off and you have to be careful because when that fence pops back up it it comes back up with a vengeance so anything that's in its way it's gonna either hurt or you know whatever but uh anyhow to get into the video uh you're going to need first off is a tape line uh, <clears throat> what you'll do you'll measure your distance of wire spacing and once you get your distance of wire spacing all you need to do is I, I, I made a stick and uh, a good idea to do on that stick if, let's just uh, pretend this is your stick here you know it's uh, four foot you're gonna have your line space then I put an E for my electric and then a normal strand and I think I ran that one 12 inches and I can't remember how I done mine but anyhow electric wire and electric on the top so that allows you to know that you're going to need an insulator boom 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 and you can steeple these as you're running them but uh anyhow the first thing you're going to need is your tape line like i said to get your spacing of your wire also uh and like i said you i'll link some stuff below there in the video you guys can look at it and uh i do like that <clears throat> branded tape line uh they've lasted pretty well in the farm but second thing you're going to need is a hammer of any type or any kind. Uh, the hammer is going to be for you to drive your steeples, uh, to drive your brace pins in your brace post or corner post. And uh, I also use them to, you can put your wire in there and kind of give it a pull or hold it, whatever you need to do. But like I said, those are a couple of the cheaper items. Uh, another cheaper item is you'll need the handle for the inline strainer ratchets. Uh, you can pick this up tractor supply for nothing, and which I don't have a strainer, but uh, pretty much just locks onto your gears, and all you're going to do is ratchet your strainer until it's tight, or if you put springs on the fence or your uh, fence line. They actually have marks in them where you can uh, tell about uh, the tightness the fence needs to be. Uh, just always remember, you know, in the summer your fence is going to get loose in the winter. It's going to get tighter. Metal is going to shrink in the winter. It's going to expand in the summer. It's as simple as that. I, I really don't mess with mine much. With uh, I'm wanting to say... I. There, there's a video that goes back and shows if you guys want to go look at it, but I, I'm wanting to say I have springs on most of my strands. 
And the reason I done that is for a simple fact is I was new, never built a high tensile fence before. I watched a bunch of, bunch of videos on YouTube, of course, uh, Stone Ridge Farmers and, uh, and watched how he done some of his stuff because you guys can see from my past videos, you know, I, I, I screwed up a lot when I done my fence. And that's why we make these videos is to help you guys so you guys don't have to mess up. But uh, also to get back to it, you're gonna need a 3 8 drill bit. Your 3 8 drill bit is gonna be, and I actually, this is an Irwin, and I like it because it was a little bit more expensive than buying a cheaper one, but it's gonna last you forever and there's, you know, it just pulls itself into the post and cleans out very well. You don't have to sit there and jam it in, jam it out. This does the trick. And, you know, a lot of times, which I don't have none, you'll take a piece of black tape, put it on your drill bit, so you know when you're deep enough for your brace pin. And this brace pin, uh, yeah, this brace pin right here would be one that you would drive all the way through your post and uh that way <clears throat> it's going to be sticking through your post like that and you'll have your little end stick out on the outside of your post so you can put your wire around it but uh the most probably in my opinion uh a real important thing and I have to take you over here. I got it up against the wall. Is the spinning Jenny uh, like 60 bucks or something like that? For I mean, I didn't get a real high dollar one, but you gotta have that thing. Uh, that is very important. I've tried it without it rolling the wire out, and it just becomes a mess. Pretty well pound this thing in the ground. And when they say they got a break, this is all they're talking about. So when they say Spinning Jenny has a brake. Uh, it's just that little rubber piece that slows it down. But Spinning Jenny is very important. It keeps your wire from getting tangled up, all that good stuff. Uh, the next thing would be, of course, you're going to have to have a drill. Uh, the drill you're going to use for your 3 8 bit. You know, you put that in there, drill your post. Drill your corner post so you can put your brace pins in. Uh, the other thing, and this is, I wouldn't recommend going very cheap on this item right here, uh, is, and you can see, I mean, mine's been in the mud and everywhere else is a crimper. The crimper is an important tool for high tensile fencing for a simple fact, and I'll show you some crimps right here. Uh, let's get one out. So what you do is you put put this on your line and let me see if I, I got a little piece of wire in here. Uh, yeah, right there. So what you're going to do, and I don't know if I can, but you put your crimp on your line like this. Okay, this is your post. You're going to come around, which this stuff's really hard to bend. I have to use two hands. You're going to bend that around and bend this part back a little bit. Yeah. But uh, then when you come around, if that was even, see if I can't get it together here, you'll put that in like that. See how that is? Then you would put it in your crimpers and I'll go ahead and just open this up the jaws are open you put this in your crimpers like so get it snugged up use both hands now and boom you got a crimp and This is actually what's going to look like when it's crimped up. And the reason you get a good set of crimpers and not a little cheap, uh, I think they sell them in a cutter slash crimper, is 
you you want to squeeze them things tight because I mean that's your lifeline that holds your fence together uh, around your corner post and so on and so forth. Uh, and like I said, uh, I'll link it below. You. They come in the different sizes, so when you put your electrical uh, splices on uh, this this set of crimpers will handle it all because it's a different size. But once those are spliced together, I mean you're not going to pull it out. So uh, crimpers are very important. You want to get a pretty good set of them, and that way you're not having to strain a whole lot. Because I mean, even right there, you, it's hard to do with one hand, especially while uh, uh, trying to do it in front of a camera. But uh, the one thing I don't have on here is a pair of high tensile cutters. I'll uh, try to find a picture and maybe add in right here. But uh, the high tensile cutters are another thing because you ain't going to sit there and cut this. This is the Max 10 wire that I use. You ain't going to cut that with a, a regular set of dikes or uh, cable cutters. I mean, they, they, it takes a strong jaw to cut them. Uh, and, you know, really, guys... Uh, We'll take you back up here real quick and I'll show you what the these are what your insulators are going to look like. You just slide over your wire and you just steeple them loose. And these are your little brace pins that would be for the outside of your corner. So all you do is you stick that in your post and stick that in your brace post and you're good to go. Uh, as you can tell when I done mine I got a two barb staple and they're one and a half inches long I uh, believe I got those at tractor supply and like I said I can't find my cutters uh, but also one more important thing is a string line uh, when you're doing your high tensile fence you want to be pretty well in line and straight because if your posts are in and out, uh, it's going to put strain on your wire steeples. And when you start really ratcheting them down, that's when you'll learn to uh, how much pressure is on a high tensile fence. But uh, anyhow, as you can see, a uh, it's a hundred of them, and they were fifteen bucks for your crimps. But you know they go a long ways. So, but. Anyhow, that will conclude the video on some tools that you need for your high tensile fencing. And if I left anything out, please comment below. Because uh, like I said, I'm no expert. Uh, I just, I mean, this is what I use, so it worked for me. And like I said, uh, the one nice thing would be is to have you... Uh, an inch by inch stick or tomato poster or something like that to use for your wire spacing so that way everything's uniform and even but uh anyhow guys thanks for watching the video please like comment and subscribe below like i said if i missed anything that you guys think i need to add please comment below and tell me uh also guys most important thing of all when you're doing your fencing and you're gonna have you're gonna be cutting little pieces of wire off like this pick them up Put them in your buggy, your bucket, or something. Because when you do turn your cows in, you don't want a chance on them getting, uh, eating this piece of wire. Because then you're going to have to shove the magnet down their throat. And all that good stuff. And who wants to do that? So, with that being said, thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Katie Hill Farmer out.